Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're going to take a look at using the actions panel to basically process an image that we've, you know, maybe cropped a little bit and sharpened up a little bit, adjusted some colors, fixed some contrast, things like that. Basically put the finishing touches, you know, throw a little border around it, maybe a little bit of vignetting, almost like a gallery effect to it. And we're also going to throw a caption onto the bottom of it. Now this can be either a, uh, just sort of like a, this is my name kind of caption, you know, Tutvid Photography, just to throw some wild example out there, or something like that. Or uh, the way we're initially going to set it up is to give you a custom a custom caption, excuse me, where the action will actually stop for you and say, hey, come in here and type a custom action in for me, and then let me go and I'll keep doing my thing and finish this thing off for you. So that's what we're going to do, and uh, that's what we're going to take a look at here in this tutorial. So it's going to be a little bit on actions and creating this nice, cool gallery effect. So the first thing I want to do is open up my actions panel, make sure it's open, window actions, here it is. I'm going to drag it off of its dock, if it allows me, there we go. And um, I have some folders here, I've got this one called for now, which is what I'm going to use initially. And inside of here I have an action called framer. And if I play this action, you're going to see what exactly it's going to do. Now, I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this photograph. And here's what the action has done for us. It's basically taken the photo, it's framed it out, put this just caption pro photography, and vignetted it, and that's it. I'm going to come to my history panel, however, and reset this to the original high resolution image. I'm going to back it out. It's quite a large image there. And um, basically, we're going to create that action from scratch, or an action that sort of looks like. So I'm going to drag that to the garbage. What I want to do is hit the new action button. I'm going to name the action Frame Me! Exclamation point. Sounds very enthusiastic, doesn't it? So Frame Me! And we're going to hit the record button. We're now we're saving this to the set for now. That's just basically set folder for now action set. There it is, frame me. And this action is live. We are recording. You can see the recording button is activated and any changes I make now are going to be placed in this actions panel. So the first thing I want to do is go image, image size. And I want to do a couple things in here. Number one, all of these images in my gallery I want to be the same width. I don't necessarily care about the height as much. I want the width to be you know, the same because it's easier for people to scroll up and down rather than side to side. So I'm going to make this 700 pixels wide. Constraining proportions, we're fine. We also want to just specify our resolution. We want this to be 72 pixels per inch because if we just allow the resolution to run wild, run rampant, everything else we do that's based on a resolution or the size of the image you know, think different sizing options we change later on are all going to change and it's going to really mess us up. So I really should have changed the resolution first because it resamples the image and now we want this to be 700 pixels wide at that resolution of 72 pixels per inch. So we're going to hit OK and you can see in our actions panel image size has been popped up there. We can see width is going to be 700 resolution 72. Perfect. So any image immediately is going to be brought to the correct size and resolution. We can now really work with this image the way I want to. The next thing we're going to do is going to be more of a general effect. We're going to go filter, uh, sharpen, smart sharpen. And here's a smart sharpen dialog. I'm really going to throw a decent amount of smart sharpening onto this. Maybe 100% uh, as far as the amount is concerned and a radius of about 0.8. It's really going to be an extreme effect. Uh, we're going to hit OK. But we're going to immediately go edit fade smart sharpen we're going to pull it back about 50 percent and mode we're going to set that to soft light so it's going to almost sharpen the edges while softening some of the bigger areas of color we're going to hit ok you can see we've got our smart sharpen and fade lined up there very nice now what we want to do next is really apply some sort of vignetting to this image the way we're going to do that is by creating a new layer here new layer and we're going to come up here, Edit, Fill. Now I'm going Edit, Fill because I want this to be very specific in the Actions panel. I want to fill this using white and leave all of this, the rest, the blending mode at normal and the opacity at 100, really. The rest of the stuff is those couple things. Hit OK. And there we go. We've just covered our image. It looks terrible now compared to what we just saw. That's fine. We'll get back to it in just a second. Next, I'm going to come up here to Layer, Layer Style, and I'm going to say Inner Shadow. My blending, or my, excuse me, my layer styles dialog box appears, and I want to switch my angle, first of all, to about 130. That's about what I want. 
I might reduce the opacity just a tad, and also the distance. I'm probably going to reduce to about three. So there we go. We've applied an inner shadow. I also want to apply an inner glow. And the inner glow blend mode is going to be normal. The color is going to be black. Select hue right here. Black. And I'm going to make the size something pretty extreme, maybe almost 50. Okay, like that. And I'm going to reduce the opacity. Bring it back to maybe 35. Just because I think that looks pretty good. After we do that, what we want to do is come up here to the Blending Options section of the Layer Style dialog box and reduce the fill opacity to zero. Now, the reason I'm doing this in the Layer Styles dialog box is because if I were to reduce the fill opacity out here in the Layers panel, it's going to really load up my Actions panel with all kinds of reduced fill opacity, reduced fill opacity about, I don't know, 50 or 60 times, a lot of times, and it's a, it's a little ridiculous. So if you just do it in here, you just get it taken care of in one shot, just like that. So I'm going to hit OK. And you can see it's just going to say set current layer, layer style. And there we go. We have set our vignetting. The next thing we want to do is come up here to image and go canvas size. And we want to, well, number one, check relative on. Canvas extension color is going to be black. You could set this to white if you want. I'm going to stick with black for now. And um, the width, we want to, well, number one, we're going to extend it in inches. We just want to extend the width and height one inch. And we're extending from the middle out. So every part of our image is going to boom out one inch. We're going to hit OK. And you're going to see there we go. We've extended it an inch of black on every side of the image. But I want there to be more room at the bottom for some text. So I'm going to go image, canvas size. And the height, I'm going to increase about 0 0.75, 3 quarters of an inch more. Whoops, I want to set that to inch. That would be why it just gave me that error. 0 0.75 inches. And I only want it to go down. So I'm going to click this center top. Uh, box right there. Canvas extension color again black. We're going to hit OK. And there you go. The bottom drops down another three quarters of an inch. So now we've got some nice space down there to place some text. So the next step would be to grab the text tool and select somewhere near the middle of the image. And just be careful up here. We want to pretty much set our text options, such as the font face, the weight. Uh, the size and all that good stuff, the color. I'm going to leave it at white. We want to set that the way we want it to be because we don't really want to have to go in there and change it once the action's set. So we're going to align this text to the left. And I'm just going to type the word dummy text. And I can't even see if that's right. So I'm going to hit check. I'm going to stop the action for a minute. I'm just going to drag that text over. And I did spell it right, so that makes me feel good about myself. Now <laughs> I'm going to continue recording. And what I want to do now is to begin aligning this text. But before we align the text, we want to uh, tell this action to slow down and stop and let you come in and put, some, put a real caption in here instead of just leaving dummy text. So now we're still recording. I want to come up here to my Actions Panel Flyout menu. That's this little you know, arrow pointing down with the three dashes or three steps next to it. When we click that. We can see we get this nice flyout menu. We want to hit insert stop. Now the message to the person using the action will be please fill in a caption and click the play button. Exclamation point. And we do not want to allow a continue button. Allowing a continue button would not really give you any time to stop and fill in the text. So we're just going to hit OK. Don't allow a continue button. Now we can go ahead and align this text. So I want to Control or Command click layer one here. And now I've got my dummy text layer selected. I want to come here to layer, align layers to selection, bottom edges or excuse me, left edges, I think in bottom edges. Now I want this text to actually sit in between the bottom of this image and the bottom of our frame altogether. So with this selection, I want to come up here to select, uh, modify, expand, and let's try 55. Hit OK. And that looks pretty good, but I think we're going to stick with 55. Now I'm going to go layer again, align layers to selection, bottom edges. So that's going to bring our dummy text all the way down to that, that selection, which essentially has become our straight edge, our line that we're dropping our caption onto. Now we can go select, deselect. And we can even come in here and reduce the opacity of this dummy text. However, I am remembering that I can't just come up here and drag the opacity bar because it will mess up my action. 
So I'm again going to go layer, layer style. By the way, you could just hit the FX button here. But I'm going the hard way, layer style blending options. And I'm going to reduce the overall opacity of this layer. Maybe bring it down to about 25-ish. Hit OK. And you can see we've set the current layer opacity. So there we go. We have just in essence created the action we need. So I'm going to hit the stop button and we're going to test this on a couple different images before just batch applying it to a folder of a few images. Um, however, actually, before we go any further, if you want to be able to save this right off the bat, this is just a matter of the way you like to work with your image. Do you like to go ahead and save all of your images manually? If so, stop the action here. You can keep a PSD of this image and you can just save it as a JPEG or however you like. But if you want to be able to automatically save right from your action, i.e. when you're batch processing, hit the record button again and just come up here to layer and hit flatten image. I don't know if that's on screen or not, but it's just below here, merge down, merge visible, and then flatten image. And we have one nice image here that can now be saved automatically as a JPEG. We don't have to worry about saving it as a PSD because there are no layers to preserve. So uh, Photoshop isn't going to feel inclined to force you into saving it as a PSD. So now I'm going to hit stop and we have this nice flattened image. Now obviously dummy text isn't the best looking of things, but we're going to take care of that. Because what we're going to do is take a look at some other images. Over in Adobe Bridge, which by the way the hotkey, Control Alt O, if you're on the Mac that will be Command Option O. Got bridge right here. I've got a few images. Some of them are default uh, Adobe images. A couple of them are mine, and a few are from one of my favorite stock photography websites on the web. That would be the Stock Exchange. Now, what I want to do is just grab a couple of these. Now, these all vary in resolution and size and orientation. You can see this one's uh, portrait orientation, and this one here is landscape. So I'm going to select both of these and just drag them into Photoshop. We're going to test our action on these because I also happen to know that they also have different resolutions. I think this one's 240, and this one's like 180 or 120 or something strange. So we're going to double click to open the actions panel, and I'm just going to hit the play button. You're going to see what's going to happen. It's going to go ahead, it's going to apply our action. It should have, there we go. I must not have hit the play button. And when it gets to the stop, the message comes up please fill in a caption and click the play button. So I'm going to hit stop. I'm going to double click the dummy text layer, and I'm just going to say fall. I'm going to put it in all, oh no, I'm not going to put it in all caps. Fall colors. Exclamation point. Hit check. And then I just hit the play button to finish off the action. And there we go. We have our finished image, which when I bring up the full size, it's a little too large to display the image in its full fall glory color. So that's that. I'm going to close that image. It works on that image. Now let's check out this image here. We're going to hit play. And it stops. I'm going to hit OK. Or I'm going to hit stop, excuse me. I'm going to zoom in a little so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to just say flying along. Check. To commit those changes, I'm going to hit the play button again, and it's going to align and fix up the opacity of that text. And there we go, we've done it to that image. So wonderful. By the way, there's the full size. So it's resizing everything just the way we want it. So the next thing to do would be, let me close this as well, would be to apply this to an entire folder of images. However, if we apply it to a folder of images, the problem is the stop action is going to throw a major wrench into uh, those plans because every time it stops it's going to stop our entire batch process so really you can't batch process um, as far as I've been able to tell at least with that stop action in there so what I want to do is open up a, uh, an image, I'm going to come back over to bridge and I'm just going to grab any of these images, I'm going to grab this this image here and I'm going to I'm going to trash the stop action, I'm hit OK, I'm just going to double click make text layer and I'm going to replace this with something like um, photography batch. Oops. Batch. Okay. There we go. And that's it. I am now going to dump that layer. And we're going to play this action and see what it does for us. I can see there that it executes the entire action nonstop and gives me just a standard generic caption photography batch now that we have something generic happening we can apply this as a batch to an entire folder of images how do we do that it's very simple file automate batch and 
all you need to do is come into here and choose your source folder, choose your destination folder. In this case, I'm going to choose my images folder here. Hit OK. And my destination folder is going to be a folder inside of my images folder called output. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to save them. The name I'm going to give them is going to be framed, a three digit serial number, and then the file extension. I'm going to hit OK. And you're going to see what's going to happen. It's going to quick buzz through them all. It takes just a minute. Okay, and that one gets closed. Because we're flattening them, it's not going to give me any problems as far as saving them. I just sit here basically and watch it. Occasionally I might have a quality thing, a JPEG, or excuse me, quality thing, a JPEG options dialog box pop up in my face that I have to close. But for the most part, they're just going to close up here nicely. And I'm going to pause it and I'll be back in just a minute. Well, they have all processed. It took a mere 20 seconds longer. Control Alt O, Command Option O to bring up Bridge, and we're going to hit that output uh, folder, and we're going to take a look at what we've got. There we go. We've got a bunch of images it looks like that have all been framed and given that same exact caption. So you can see it's very easy. Oh, by the way, they also have that name framed 001, framed 002, etc., etc., etc. So that is a very simple and easy way to create an action that throws a frame, a vignette, and a nice little caption around your image, and it's all automized, so it's very fast and easy. You create it once, and you press a play button every time thereafter. So very, very easy to do, very cool, and an extremely useful technique here in Photoshop. Hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you very much for watching.